the Just Because Buzz, Thread Tales number 12. I want to say a special welcome to all my new subscribers. What a blessing to see that number tick up, and I think it was a result of Jerry over at Yankee Creek Stitcher. She was so kind to shout me out, and as a result, I think a lot of subscribers came over and uh, visited with me, so thank you. Today is Thursday, January 28th. It's a snowy winter day here in Northwest Ohio. It's very pretty. Um, some flurries in the air and may get some more this weekend and early next week. So we'll just see. I know noticed on some other Instagram accounts this morning that people were getting snow around. I know my parents down in Lexington got uh, around three inches. So lots of snow around and lots of wintry weather. So thank you again for coming by and visiting with me. I hope you'll grab a cup of tea or some coffee and sit and visit with me. If you're new to my channel, thank you. I hope you'll stick around, subscribe, like, comment. I love reading the comments, so stick around. Uh, I want to share my little mug here. This is the mug that I made with my husband. He made one too. Uh, we were on a marriage retreat with our church, Buck Run Baptist Church, down in Frankfort, Kentucky, when we were down there, and they used to do an annual marriage retreat. Still do it, but this year it's going to be a little different, a little virtual, but we would go down to Pigeon Forge and have a lot of free time, and one year we got together and we decided to make mugs and went to a pottery studio, and they taught us how to throw the mud and the clay, and I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but anyway, they helped us, and then they picked out the color with us and they fired it for us and then later mailed it home to us so it was a lot of fun to bake with him he was better at it than I was for sure as far as doing the shape and all of that yeah I didn't get a lot of help but anyway I like my mug so all right so have a lot to get to today lots of stitching um, projects uh, because we reached the 300 subscribers, I have some shares, so uh, we'll talk about that later. And just wanted to share my old FFO. We'll just get right into it. So this is not something I made, but it's something a friend of mine from Enterprise Alabama made. And it's this little needle keeper, and it's a little bird, as you can see. And under the wings, there's a little piece of felt on both sides, and that's where you can put your needles. And it's got this pretty little ribbon. And this little pin is actually from Enterprise, Alabama. Uh, it's the Bow Weevil Monument. And I'll let you Google that and, and look that up. That monument actually stands in the center of their little downtown. But anyway, there you go. Very, very cute FFO made by a friend of mine from Enterprise. So... One of my videos recently, I said that if I had five fully finished objects, I could start a new cross stitch piece. So guess what? I'm trying to stick to that. And I'm going to start showing you some of my fully finished projects. So we're going to start off with the Stitch Card Set B by Lori Holt. And I can't find them right now, but I think a lot of people have seen them. If not, you can look on Fat Quarter Shop or Google the Stitch Cards by Lori Holt. And there's all kinds of sets. I think they go through G now, maybe. Maybe a few more. But this one is Daddy's Tractor. So last time I had it stitched, but didn't have it fully finished. So I made it into a little pillow that's going to go into a bowl. And the back of it, I really wanted to use this red tractor fabric for obvious reasons. Well, I didn't have much left because I had used this in my Farm Girl Vintage uh, quilt and just had some scraps left. So with that, I decided to make a border and so I could use the square in the center. And then this was stitched all the way around using Lori Holt's method of making the little penny pillows. And cut a hole in the center and then you cover up that hole with something fun and decorative and so I decided to do it with the hearts. So I had two layers of uh, wool felt and then felted wool I believe, but two different kinds. And then just did this kind of running stitch around the edge. The heart stitches on the heart are 
blanket stitches and then this is just kind of a running stitch around the edge. So that was fun. I'm going to make some more of those. I have, there's four patterns on the little stitch cards, so I need to make the other three. All right. The next one is the Summer Basket, and this is a pattern by Lizzie Cape. And it has this cute little button on it by just another button company. And I had planned to get this shipped out to my friend, but I haven't done that yet. I just really fully finished it. So I will go ahead and show it and then I'll get it shipped. So this is this finish. So again, I did another little pillow finish and it's got the cute little bee button on there. And I used the called for DMC threads. And then on the back, I finished it the same way with the Lori Holt finishing um, where you stitch all the way around and cut the center and then used a piece of uh, wool felt, or felted wool, I think this is felted wool, and did a blanket stitch around there and then put this cute little button on there with some ribbon. So there's that one. So that's number two. And then to know you, I showed this little perforated paper. To know you is to love you. And wasn't sure how I wanted to finish it and started playing around with this black rickrack and really liked how the edges looked for that. And the, then used the back of it, I used a piece of uh, felt on the back of it with a little black gingham hanger. And I can't remember where this pattern came from. It was stitched so long ago. Um, the next, this starting with this one and the next few, I don't even know where I got some of these patterns because they were stitched so long ago and they were just down in a box waiting to be fully finished. And so with all the creativity on FlossTube and Instagram and with um, the tutorials that are out there, um, finally figuring out how, to wanna, how I want to finish some of these. And then the next one is When This You See. So this was a little bit of a challenge because I had stitched this with hardly any border at all. I mean, what's in the seam is what was the border. So um, I just decided to make it into a little pillow or something like for Valentine's. Uh, again, use that Lori Holt method and put a little piece of uh, wool felt over the back of that and then added this cute little button. And the button actually, because of the way it is on here, it's got a shank and I didn't take the shank off. I used it to attach it. You can kind of set it down and it sits up because of the button. So it's, it kind of has a dual purpose. Um, but I do like how it turned out. So it'll go down in my Valentine area. And then, so that was number four. So number five is what I call the row heart. And I'm not sure where this one came from either. So just finished it in the heart shape. Put some light pink chenille trim that I had around. Finished it on the back kind of the same way. Lloyd Holt method, blanket stitch of the wool. And then I ran this ribbon through the center shank of this button so that um, it would kind of create its own bow and then stitched it down on the back. So just a sweet little heart. So five fully finishes. Yay! I'm so excited. Alright, so whips. Going into whips. So we're going to go first of all with Mighty Acorn. And I and stored and in my Blackbird bag here. Let's see. Hard place to put it. So Mighty Acorn is in the New Winds of Autumn book and it's this chart right here. And since I have last seen you all, I have been to uh, Craft Gallery and able to get the rest of my threads. And I did change out that blue. I thought the blue that I had originally chosen was too had too much blue. And this is more true to the gray in my house. So I'm going to try that for the house. So that's really the only change I plan to make. And then the 
this is the piece. This is where I've gotten so far. And so I've done all the top and then all the borders. Both borders are done now and the whole top is done. So the next part that I will start is the words. And I've made this my Sunday stitch. Since it's a sampler, I just made it to be my Sunday stitch. Sunday sampler stitching. So I'm really enjoying this. I think it's really pretty. This is my first Blackbird design sampler. So it's just the colors are just so pretty and I love the motifs and it's been a pleasure to stitch on. <clears throat> like I said, these are the colors and there's that the blue. Okay. The next thing is the giving thanks and we've talked about giving thanks um, it's this chart here. It's a wool penny rug on the outside, little penny tongues, but then on the inside is all the cross stitch. And these are the little colors, all fall, but that blue teal, real pretty. Nice project bag, and I did a little more progress on it. Um, starting to get some more colors in there. There we go. So it's slow stitching for sure because of the black, and I'm, I'm only stitching it up here, so it's a little slower in stitching category than some of my other pieces. And then I was able to put on my ABC Mill Hill sampler, I went ahead and added the beads for the, when they're not beads, the little charms, treasures, I think it's more the right word, but um, added those to the queue. So, so I'm still waiting on treasures. This is pretty much um, what, the, what the piece is going to look like. I, I am going to change the date to 2021 because that's when I'm going to actually finish it. Um, so I'm still waiting on charms or treasures from the craft gallery. Um, probably could just move on. The only one that would really, I would really like to have is there's a strawberry uh, charm, I believe, on this P. And I'd really like to have that, that particular treasure. I keep saying charm, but they're called treasures. And I would really like to have that. Uh, I could probably do without the rest um, for the most part, but would like to have that one. So I was able to get those two treasures on. <clears throat> the next one uh, I attempted to work on, this is the one that was gifted to me by my friend Sandy, who has since passed away. But uh, this is the piece that she gifted to me. She had done the majority of the work. What's needed to finish are these bees up in this corner over here. And I got it out the other day and was going to work on it. But the challenge is, I think if you're cross stitcher for very long and you have whips that have been sitting around for years, you know what a challenge it is to get it back out and figure out where you were. And for this one, I'm getting it back out, not only trying to figure out where I left off, but also where Sandy left off and certain pieces of it because it's just um, such an intricate uh, piece and the bees are very um, detailed. And so that has been a challenge. I was attempting to, to work up here um, on these bees, but it's hard it is hard to figure out where she was and what I need to do. Um, but I'm determined that I'm going to get this finished and get it framed properly and have this treasure. Um, she truly did a, a fabulous job. Uh, there's a lot of specialty stitches in here. And she loves that kind of detail. And so I, I want to work on getting this finished. The... Um, 
colors there there's like a highlight blue in here that I need to pull um, so it, yeah there's just I just need to spend the day and it wouldn't take a day I don't think I think it, it just might even take you know just part of a, a day just to try to get them done because she did most of the bees it's these uh, three that I think I have three or four that I need to just finish so I really hope to get that done soon and then as I was looking at this other whip that I have um, the Mill Hill button and beaded kit I showed this and I decided to stitch it on fabric well when I was looking at this and pulling it out I did not take into consideration when I was doing this and this has been a while since I had started this one I don't even remember I didn't take into consideration that the perforated paper uh, holes are much bigger than what's in this linen and the perforated paper direct or the, the kit directions for the perforated paper talk about that, for instance this red up here is done with three threads well oh my goodness I did do that but it's very very thick um, it's, it's not as not as pretty to me uh, it's like it's too much um, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that if I'm gonna take it out because I've beaded some already in here I'm just not sure um, I think it's such a pretty little piece and it's gonna be pretty when it's stitched but I've got to really sit down and think about how I want to proceed because uh, I didn't think about that and take that into consideration when I decided to put it on the linen that I would need to adjust my threads accordingly so that it would look nice and they would lay pretty. So I'm going to have to think about that one. So those are my whips. I did have, uh, or since I did have the five finishes fully finished, I did a new start. And this is one a lot of people have seen and are working on and already finished. <laughs> But it's the Country Cottage Needlework January Sampler. I finally got this in. It was um, traveling from California, and it, it just took a while to get here. So that's okay. It finally did, and I've got a good start on it. So there's another row of greenery down here, and then we'll put the snowman up here, and then the same greenery up here, and then... I have a few details to add. I need to add the details to the window panes. I need to add the carrot uh, nose to the snowman. There's some French knots. So still some details to go on this one. But maybe I'll get it done by the end of the month. Maybe. Yeah. It's coming, huh? So these are the colors for this one. There's the orange. So that's been a lot of fun to start. That was a Christmas gift from my family and I really enjoyed that. The next thing I did, I had a new start and finish. Uh, Liz Matthews with Hello from Liz Matthews gave her... Um, newsletter subscribers a free chart and I stitched it just wanted to play around with some of my new fabric that I had um, this is on 32 count Belfast linen silvery moon and I use color and cotton uh, blue hydrangea so I just wanted to play around and see what it would look like and it's such a pretty chart so it's fun to use a a thread that had a lot of irrigation in it because uh, I never I just bought the thread didn't really have a project in mind and thought it was really pretty I did accidentally personalize it um, meaning I, I left out a stitch in the P so it's not as wide but nobody would have known it except maybe Liz if she saw it um, so I might finish it as a bookmark or as a little pillow I'm not sure but what a great word huh hope <clears throat> another finish that I had 
that I'm working on to get fully finished is this little rose. I've got it in a little pillow form, but I'm not sure how I want to finish the edges. So I'm still trying to play with that. Um, so hopefully next time I'll have this fully finished, but it's on its way. And then I'm also working on a wool applique project. This is my own project, my own pattern. And so I'm just kind of gonna show that to you. It's a little table mat. And I've been working on the stitching around the hearts using the blanket stitch. So I've got the yellow and the purple finished and then I'm working on the pink. And then I'm gonna try to figure out how I wanna put this down, put the rick rack down if I'm gonna stitch through that. And then I've got to figure out the center. But it's just going to be like a little table mat, candle mat for Valentine's. So I'm playing around with that on my wool applique. <clears throat> okay, so Quilty UFO. I have been working on a Tanner Bomb because Louise has really been encouraging me to finish this quilt. It is a beautiful quilt, but there are a lot of steps and a lot of sewing involved. So she's been encouraging me on Fridays when we FaceTime and stitch together, so to speak. <laughs> so as you can see behind me, this is the quilt and there is a hole. And I did finish the last hole. This is the timber frame house and this is paper pieced and you can see those tiny 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 pieces but man it took a little while to construct this but I am thankful it's done and then the next portion that I'll be doing is the red borders so these borders and then there's a part of what looks to be, I think it's, it's either courthouse steps, I think, goes out into this border. So I've got to create that. Um, so next are the big borders. And after the borders, then the applique. So that's coming along the borders. I'm pretty sure Louise had cut a lot of these for me. So the strips are, some of them are cut, some of them I've got to still cut, but those will be the borders. Lots of work there. Still yet to go, but I am pleased that I have all the paper piecing done. And so now we're working on just straight sewing with borders. And then I had a quilty new start. And normally I would not have done that because I have not finished five quilts. Um, but I think I shared before that I had ordered a quilt kit for my husband for Christmas because I wanted to make him a quilt uh, for Christmas. And it did not come until after Christmas. And I'm just now getting around to getting it stitched or starting it. So I've got the center done. I want to show that to you. This is a picture, a black and white picture of what the quilt will eventually look like. And it's called Lakeside Woods Lap Quilt. Whoops, I'm rolling over things. Maybe I can still do it. So I'm just gonna kind of scan it up. Okay, so that is the center of it. It still needs three borders and I'll show you those. What those are gonna look like. Let's 
so the wood grain is the border that's closest to the center of the quilt and then there's a small one inch border of this brown and then there's a border of this print with all the birds and animals and well I said birds but I don't think there's any birds um bears um the cabin it's the same motifs that are on the center blocks of the quilt so yeah so I need to get the borders on so I was excited to at least get the center done that was that was something that was accomplished so yay got that done so his quilt is well on the way okay so I was gonna go over haul with you I had quite a bit of haul um, shouldn't take too long to go through though uh, one of the first things is, I think I've shared before that I bought the Project Quarantine um, pattern, but I didn't have all the threads that I wanted. So I, um, when I went to Craft Gallery to get threads for Mighty Acorn, I picked up some more of the threads for this project too. And I also have the, I have a 2020 charm to put on this project when I get done. It definitely is. I'm going to commemorate that. And then... The Christmas gifts that arrived, I shared the January uh, Sampler of the Month by Country Cottage Needleworks, and the thread pack came with that as well. And so these are all the threads that will be used for all of the samplers that are going to come in the months throughout the year. So I have all the threads already, so I'm pretty excited about that. <coughs> And then I also received this for Christmas. This was uh, also in that same package with the January and the sampler of the month. Uh, this was a 2018 collector's heart and it's a little pin cushion and then a little ornament and it comes with the fabric and the little embellishment pack as well as uh, it came with the the thread packs to make those and so I can do some Valentine stitching I'm looking forward to that and then heart and hand and let's see I had another Christmas gift that came and this is from a little Etsy shop called the farmer's attic and I'll hold that up there so you can see it going to focus. Anyway, she's on Etsy and my daughter had ordered these items from her for Christmas and they shipped December 2nd and they came this past week. So, um, shout out to the mail postal service because they finally got it here. Um, but I had already, um, the shop owner with Farmer's Attic had already given me a dis uh, refund because she just didn't think it was going to make it something had happened and so I purchased this when I went down to craft gallery because I really wanted it uh, for a little valentine stitch that was the whole reason I had ordered this at Christmas because I thought well I'll have one valentine stitch anyway so now I have two of these so Louise is going to get one of these and we'll stitch it together but it's the heart and hand love whirly gig and it's just a cute little Valentine. And then I also received some John James needles, the tapestry number 26, uh, to try some needles that um, are made by John James. I've, I've heard they're, they're good, so we'll see. see what I think. So give the Farmer's Attic a, a try. She has a lot of pretty, pretty things on her website, um, including punch needle cross stitch wool quilting great service and she's real responsive when you um, email her and message her through Etsy and then let's see I had a Hobby Lobby gift card and so I last Friday I went over to Hobby Lobby just to walk around and see what kind of things they had and they had their spring things on sale and so that was fun and found this cute red and white polka dot watering can. I thought it would be really cute for maybe a finish or just for decorating. It's really cute. 
And then also from Hobby Lobby got some little mini roses for finishing. These have little wires on the back, so they would be good for attaching. And then I got one of the 20, 21 charms to put on one of my pieces. Not sure which one yet. And that was fun. I got to spend a gift card there. And then there's this little antique shop down in Waterville. And I've been wanting to go. We went the other day and they were already closed. But I went back. I had a dental appointment on Thursday and treated myself to Goodwill and the Waterville uh, scene, which is just a cute little small town. And so they had this really cute little cross stitch, another one of the little silhouettes. And I'm looking forward to playing around with that and restitching it. And then I found one of the vintage spools to use for finishing. I like the color on it and that it's been varnished. It's pretty. And then I did go to Goodwill. I mentioned that. I didn't find anything stitchy related, but I found a set of Jeanette Oak books. If anybody's familiar with that, she's a, a Canadian author. Uh, she wrote the series When Calls the Heart that's popular on the Hallmark Channel. And so I found another series by her and the set was all four of the books. And so anyway, I bought, I bought that. And then these are some fabrics that my daughter gave me for Christmas. So this is kind of a canvas type fabric. Not sure what I'll use for it. And then this is just a pretty little white and navy print. So she got that for me for Christmas. And then the other sampler of the month from um, Beach Cottage came and the pattern pack. And so this is the February sampler of the month. So we're getting ready to stitch that when I finish January. Okay. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my thread organization. Now that I've kind of gotten in some of the um, specialty threads, I had to figure out how to organize it because I didn't have any kind of storage system for the specialty threads. So I looked at a few tutorials. One of them was of Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. And she had a method of using hanging files and cutting them and then hole punching and hanging her threads from there. And then she had a um, box, a plastic tote box that was the right width to hang these in for files. So it's made for files. And then she could hang her fabric in, or excuse me, her, hang her threads in there and she uh, put a lid on the box and keep the dust off them and that kind of thing. And then she has a, a labeling system. So I was going to use a variation of that. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to exactly do it, but I thought I could do something similar because I didn't have the box and I was going to try not to buy any more plastic boxes if I could just because I have so many and I thought, well, maybe there's another way I could store mine. And so one day I went to Goodwill. This was not this past week, but another day. And I found these folders um, or these files. And it was a um, hanging files. It was reflections. And I think I paid $2 for this whole pack. And so I proceeded to do my own little method of thread storage. So I was going to show you that real quick. I decided to hang mine in the closet so I could just easily access them. And so I did similar as to what Vonna did. I cut the bottom off and the folders are nice enough that you could actually use them for something else, for storing um, paper or something like that. You could still use those folders so that wasn't a waste. And then using the, the little binder rings and hanging the threads just like Vonna did but except instead of hanging it in a plastic box I decided to hang mine on a hanger and hang it in the closet and so I've used paper clips to be able to attach my um, files to and then I labeled which company this is if I'm looking at it in my closet and I want to know which one company it is so this was color and cotton and so 
um, these are on here and I've just I don't have that big of a collection yet so I've just got a few hanging on here um, so that's that's one of the companies I've got a few more of this group this is Crescent Colors which is now color and cotton so I have a lot of color and cotton now because of um, getting the thread packs for the um, sampler of the month club but um, I'm keeping them with the projects right now and then when they're done then I can hang them on here so this is classic color works so again use the paper clip and the, uh, put them just on a regular hanger <laughs> and then this is another one I just gentle arts so just same thing if I made my own thread drops um, I did get a kit from Beth Twist one time, the Heartstring Samplery, and the threads did not come on a uh, card. They were just kits. So I made my own thread drops and just used those too. So I have made a hanger for all of the uh, major brands that I had, and I just hang them in my closet, and I can just easily go access them. So right now, it's it's pretty easy to see what kind of thread I have and what colors I have uh, I'm sure when I get if I get more then um, this system I may have to adapt it a little bit or change it a little bit but right now I think it's it's gonna work pretty good for me and um, just thought I'd share that with you so just a regular clothes hangers and paper clips and um, hole punch um, let's and the binder rings that's really all I, I used um, and a lot of times at estate sales or a Goodwill you can find file folders and things like this office supplies for pretty cheap and um, if you like that system then you could pick them up and if you like the storage box idea then you could find a storage box that holds the file folders so you could you could purchase that that would be probably ideal if you're really trying to keep the dust off of them in the closet it's still gonna have dust I'm sure but um, at least they're hanging and they're they're not tangled and I have a I have a system right now anyway so okay I want to talk about shares so since I reached 300 subscribers I did want to do a share and these are um, open to um, anybody and so the first one this kind of reminded me of the rose that I showed you that I'm working on finishing. Kind of similar, isn't it? This was a Leisure Arts. And so this piece was actually, um, just trying to see. The, ho the box is a Sudbury House box, but you could finish it any way you wanted it. And so if you would like to be included in the share possibility, put Rose in your comments. And remember with a share, you don't say the word giveaway and you have to be 18 because I have to ask for your address. And you have to be a subscriber. So, if you like this one, you're going to put rose. And if you like this one, we're going to do two. Hello Spring by the Pickle Barrel. You're going to put spring. Okay. And I will do the random comment picker. And we will share those the next video I do which is usually about every two weeks so a new feature on my channel is sharing a recipe so I'm gonna insert a picture here and these are actually made by my daughter but I had given her the recipe last weekend and she made the made them and had a good picture of them and I don't have a good picture of the ones I made um, these are called cinnamon roll muffins and they are so delicious and I'm gonna put a link in the description down below and it is from the, I don't know if it's a blog, probably a blog, but it's called Some the Wiser. And there's cinnamon roll muffins. You could um, Google it too, probably, and come up with 
uh, the, the recipe and they were so delicious and they made the house smell really good and you get the cinnamon roll um, flavors and not a ton of the work because cinnamon rolls tend to be a lot of work unless you're using the Pillsbury kind. So anyway, that's the recipe of the week and or the this Thread Tales and I think they're a great winter addition to your baking and just enjoying a great cinnamon roll muffin looking at the snow and drinking some coffee. I think it's perfect. All right. So I'd like to end with encouraging words. So I wanted to share a little bit when I was in Hobby Lobby the other day. Um, on Floss Tube, uh, or my Thread Tales number three, I shared a Dolly Parton quote as part of my encouraging word. And that was, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. Well, I was in Hobby Lobby, as I said, and I look up in the spring section and there is this section of Dolly Parton kitchen stuff. And on one of the towels was that quote. And I thought, oh my gosh, how fun is that? I didn't purchase it, but I just thought it was really neat that that was one of the quotes that they chose to put on a towel that is being sold in Hobby Lobby. And um, so anyway, if you haven't been to Hobby Lobby lately and seen the Dolly Parton line, um, you can go see it. it. It's pretty. It really is pretty. So I wanted to talk a little bit for encouraging words. Um, today marks the 35th year um, since the Challenger disaster. And even though that was a, a very tragic day in our country, I just thought um, of the um, exciting time that led up to that, especially involving the fact that a civilian teacher was going up and it was the first time a civilian was going up and that was Krista McCullough. And so I just thought it was encouraging to think about that and how excited she was and really the whole country because all the <clears throat> kids at schools, um, that was one of the early times of uh, kids being able to watch um, something on TV at school. And I was in college at the time at Louisiana Tech, and I remember sitting down at lunch, or actually I pulled out my journal and read that my uh, roommate and I were having lunch, and she shared with me what had happened. I hadn't even heard about it. And that later that night, instead of giving the State of the Union address, President Reagan had to address the country regarding this tragedy. And one of the things that he said um, regarding the mindset of the folks that were going on the Challenger mission was, give me a challenge and I'll meet it with joy. And gosh, we've, we've been challenged a lot in the past year. And I pray that I've met those challenges with joy and not with um, angst or um, anxiety or doubts. I know that as we were getting ready to move this time last year, I did have some anxiety and concerns about it. We were struggling with getting the right house and um, finding a house and then finding one and then not having a good inspection and not being able to get it and starting over. But with every challenge, we are given the opportunity to either approach it with joy or approach it with another attitude that's not as healthy. So I pray that um, if you're going through something that's really tough right now, that you can um, approach it with a joyful attitude. Um, ask, reach out to folks that uh, could help you. Um, look in the scriptures. There's so many uplifting and encouraging scriptures out there that can help you through anything you're going through. So I just want to encourage you with that. Um, I appreciate you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some inspiration. I hope you've been encouraged. And I hope you'll come back and visit and leave a comment. I would love to uh, hear your comments. I would love to be able to ship these to pretty patterns out to someone just as a thank you and I hope you have a great day and that you will enjoy every stitch and so just because.